Yep, guys, it's that time again. A little high tea and shenanigans with Lenkak. I'm out here, uh, out here at the range again. Surprise, surprise, huh? Looking out over the valley. It's crisp this morning. I don't think it's probably even 40 degrees yet out here, but it's pretty nice. Sunny, although we have had uh, already had our share of chemtrails this morning. Um, which I find to be very nefarious, although nobody seems to know anything about them other than they know what's in them, they know what's in the chemtrails. I think of, what is it, aluminum oxide and barium and strontium. I'm sure that's, I'm sure it's all there for our betterment and our good, right? But I find it interesting, nobody has come forward to say what they are. But uh, here's what we got today, you know the, you guys know the drill. Set up out there at 100 yards again. Come on, focus, you bitch. And um, I got a very delectable little number here. I am uh, going to range test today that I just got done going over. And uh, it's really nice. This is a 19. This is a redo. This was a redo, and if my... BE. This is a uh, Canton Armory redo, I think. I think this was a 1943 rifle. has a 1953 stock on it. It's Beechwood. And um, just so you guys know, this one is uh, one I'm doing for one of my YouTube viewers. Um, he thought enough of my work to send me this. And I hope I don't disappoint. But I'm going to do a little range test on it today. As you can see, I've already, I've already put my diopter sights on it. And uh, this thing has came out pretty darn good. He asked me if I want, if he should sell it and get one of mine. Or, but I looked. He sent me some pictures of it, and I says, "No, nah, that one you're probably going to want to keep." So he sent it to me, and I went over it. I just got to uh, do a range test on it, and then I'll, I'll ship it back to him. That's what I wanted to get some uh, video for uh, for my uh, for my buddy, my client. Um, so let's uh, let me flip this thing around and we'll take a look at on the other side too. And so here's the uh, other side. Came out very well. Good clean beechwood stock. You don't find them in this kind of shape very often. But uh, as you know, I. I go through them and I do my I do my thing to it. Um, just so you guys know, I mean, typically in the past what I've done is I would buy my K31s for myself and then I would refinish them and put them up online or uh, I would sell them through various means, you know, whether it be somebody contacting me through my YouTube videos or whatever. But it's become apparent to me recently that K31s have gone gone off the map on price. I I, I can't really buy them for myself for what they want for them nowadays and what people pay for them and then invest my time and money in them and still come out ahead on them which is a shame because I enjoy doing them and I like preserving these uh, wonderful pieces of uh, craftsmanship you know old world craftsmanship so um, I guess my thought is this is I, I guess if if anybody's interested in having me do one of these they might want to contact me at lencac at hotmail.com we'll talk about it get some pictures and see I'll give you my I'll give you my uh, thoughts on what you got and what what it would come out like but because um, anymore I'd, I just can't justify paying the money these people want so I might as well start doing k31s that people already own um, so that's about the uh, drift of that but check it out it's pretty sweet this is a very extremely extremely nice k31 as you can see But uh, let me let me get set up here. I got some monkey business to take care of. I think I'm going to set my chronograph up again and maybe do some chronographing of rounds while I'm range testing this. I brought the Grunig today too. I'm going to do one last test with the 7.5-06 rounds that I make and see uh, one more experiment I want to try with it. So okay, guys, let me get this set up here and do some shooting. All right, guys. Here we go. First shot with this rifle. It's 
you can see I put my uh, adopter sights on it um, and I did a bore sight on it I didn't have to do much it looked like it was pretty much on so I want to take a shot this is my pent load uh, 178 grain Hornady ELD match bullets on top of 46 grains of IMR 4320 I know it shoots good so so let's Let's see how it goes. It's my first shot with this rifle. Let's take a shot with it and see what gives. Okay. And I do have this loaded in GP11 brass. 2543. It's pretty cold out here, so the ammunition is cold right now. I want to take and from a headspace gauge, just check headspace on it. Oh yeah. This is a good one. One inch 803. It's a good tight chamber. During the process of uh, rebuilding this thing and restoring it, I do believe what uh, transpired. I do believe what transpired is they restocked it and rebarreled it and put a new bolt sleeve on it. Um, other than that, still has a matching number butt plate on it. Um, all numbers matching, of course. So uh, let's take a look, see where it went. All right, that's not too bad for first shot. That is an uh, inch and a half left and two inches high. So let's take another shot to verify to verify the sights. Got a nice crisp trigger on it. It's mill spec, but it's nice crisp, very smooth first stage, snappy crisp uh, break of the sear. But of course. It's the redundancy department of redundancy because all K31s have terrific triggers on them. I don't think I've ever seen a K31 trigger that wasn't noticeably better than any other military issue rifle. That is virtually through my first shot. It's touching my first shot. You know, it's not right in the middle of the bullseye. But that's okay, because I try, primarily am concerned about uh, see how it shoots, check the headspace, make sure it all functions good, and check it for accuracy. So it's it's on the black, it's in the black. So I'm not really concerned about moving it to the absolute bullseye. Like I say, because I have my doctor sights on it. Whoever the person who owns this rifle, uh, Jason who was uh, trusting enough and kind enough to send it to me let me do my thing to it. He obviously will have to have his own sights on it or he'd be using the combat sight or something. So it's not really important that I put that, that I adjust them so that it goes to the bullseye. All right. There you go. There's a case that's starting to fail. This is this case's last tour of duty right there. I know you can't see that, but I can see where the case is starting to give way right around there. That's where they fail. Three firings on GP11 brass is all they're good for. The original firing, two reloadings. Oh yeah, that's right there too. Just maybe, I don't know, half inch to the right of my first two shots. I know you guys might think I make it look easy, but these sights, they're, they're not like using a scope. Um, they take some discipline to shoot and some familiarity. So, and some days I do better than others. This case looks okay still, but I'll probably be inclined to throw the whole batch out now. That is 
right between my first two shots and my uh, third shot. Impressive. This is, this is an accurate rifle. Jason, you are going to get yourself a hell of a shooting K31 here. It's obvious. Doesn't take too long to figure this out on these things. Nice trigger on this thing. Nice, very nice trigger. And I haven't done anything to it. I haven't touched it. Left it as uh, the way it came, mil spec. That is just stellar right there. That's a hell of a five shot group right there. Five shot. Three shot groups are easy. Four shots, a little bit hard. Five shot groups, pretty damn hard to come by. But uh, nice, beautiful K31, huh guys? Of course, I've uh, completely gone through the stock. I refinish it and re. Uh, it's not perfect. I don't try to make them perfect. There's some things that come with these military K31 stocks that just aren't going to come out of the wood. So they're part of the character and the heritage of the rifle. What I try to do is I try to make them, I clean them up, make them, make, bring the wood back uh, so that the wood looks good again. Um, in spite of its flaws that it may have from its previous life as a service rifle. And uh, then I go through the whole rifle, I check, I check everything, I check clearances, I inspect everything that it's in proper order. And then I send uh, all the uh, certain parts of it that are usually blued, I send them over to my professional Cerakote guy, Jesse, at Legendary Coatings, and he does a bang up job for me. Um, this one is done in in armor black and uh, terrific, terrific color for these rifles, especially with this blonde stock. It, uh, the contrast between the uh, armor black and the polished Swiss steel and the blonde beechwood is nice. This, this rifle's name, by the way, is Rudy. I don't know if Jason knows it's a girl. Um, just as you can just tell the way she handles. But uh, at any rate, there we go. I don't know what that 28, 4, 25, 48 on that one. I'll have to uh, watch the video, see what the other ones were that I, I called out the first velocity and the last one. I didn't call it the middle ones. There you go, Jason. This thing is rock solid and it is absolutely dead nuts accurate. You did good for yourself. Check that out, guys. That is five rounds. That is stellar. That's about as good as I can shoot them, I tell you what. That, uh, that rifle, uh, my restoration job and everything, that rifle is, is dab. Tell you what, that is great. That makes me happy to see that. I'm sure it'll make Jason real happy too.